Okay, this video is being shot to help prepare you for the IV push lab that you will have prior to beginning clinicals in 2115L. There are two possible scenarios that you may have to work through in the IV push lab. One of them is giving IV push medications through a saline lock, and the other is giving IV push medications through an existing IV. So we'll go through both of them um, one at a time, the different steps, and then we'll put it all together and show you how to um, perform this skill. There are a couple of things that are common to both of the experiences, and then there are a few things that are different. So let's talk about what the two experiences have in common. The first is that both of them will use the same um, checkoff list, and this checkoff list will be posted on WebCT. You should print this out and have this with you when you practice during open lab hours prior to the actual lab. The other form that will be on WebCT is the medication administration record, and there will be one of these for each of the possible drugs that you will give during the actual IV push lab checkoff. It'll be one of probably three or four drugs, and you should be familiar with each of them. And when I say familiar with each of them, I mean that you should look up the drugs before you come to the lab because we would expect you to know um, the classification of the drug, any special precautions with the drug, and um, important nursing assessments. For example, if it's digoxin or a beta blocker, we would expect you to check the patient's heart rate before you gave the drug. The other thing that you must look up with each of these drugs that you'll find in the drug book is the amount of time that the drug has to be pushed over. Each drug needs to be given in a specific time frame, and you need to know that before you give the drug. And of course, the five rights of medication administration will be common to both experiences. There will be open lab practice before the lab checkoff that faculty will be present at to help you work through the different scenarios and to give you time to actually practice the psychomotor skills and um, ask any questions that you might have. So the first um, scenario that I want to work through is IV push through a saline lock. And so Okay, let's look at the saline lock. And there's one important thing that you need to consider when you're giving drugs through an existing IV, I mean through a saline lock. And that is the fact that once an IV catheter is inserted in a patient at most hospitals, um, then an extension set is put onto the IV catheter. And this extension set, as you can see, can be four inches long. And in this four inches of extension tubing, there is a given volume of fluid. And that becomes very important for you to know once you start pushing your drug. Every hospital will have the extension tubing in its packaging, and on that packaging, it tells you what volume is in the extension set. This extension set is the Braun type, and the Braun type, it tells me on the packaging, contains 0.7 milliliters of fluid, and they call that the priming amount. And so in order to prime this extension tubing, is almost a milliliter of fluid. That becomes very important when you're pushing your drug, because often you're only pushing about a milliliter. And I'll demonstrate to you why that's important. The drug that I'm going to be using for demonstration purposes today is Lasix or furosemide, 10 milligrams per milliliter. So for our demonstration, let's say that I'm giving 20 milligrams of Lasix. If it's 10 milligrams per milliliter, that means I'm giving 2 milliliters of fluid. When I look this up in the drug book, the drug book tells me that I'll be giving the 2 milliliters over a period of one minute. For our demonstration purposes today, we've dyed the drug a dark green so that you can see this more clearly. So in this syringe, I have two milliliters or 20 milligrams of Lasix. The drug book tells me that I'll be pushing this over one minute. To make that a little bit more manageable, I think, well, two milliliters over one minute means that I'll be giving one milliliter in 30 seconds. And it also means that I'll be giving about a quarter of a milliliter every 15 seconds as I push. And so if I do this, I want you to notice the volume that it requires just to fill the extension tubing. So I said that I was going to be giving a half a milliliter every 15 seconds. And so if I push a half a milliliter, you can see that the drug hasn't even gotten to my patient yet. So it's kind of pointless to start timing the administration of a drug when the drug hasn't even reached your patient yet. What I really need to do is push the Lasix until I know it's to my patient, which I know was 0.7 milliliters. Now I can start giving the drug and timing the administration for my patient. So once the drug has reached the patient, now I push a half a milliliter and I wait 15 seconds. For the purposes of this video, I won't actually wait 15 seconds. I push the next half a milliliter and I wait 15 seconds. I push the next half a milliliter and I wait 15 seconds. Now this is the point after giving a drug that you would normally put your flush fluid on and flush the IV. 
but I can't just flush in all this remaining drug that's still in the extension tubing. And so what I need to do at this point is continue to push the flush in in the same time that I was giving the drug, which means with my flush, I push a half a milliliter and I wait 15 seconds because as you can see, there's still drug in this extension tubing. And so I push another half a milliliter. And now you can see that the drug is gone from the extension tubing. At this point, wait 15 more seconds and then you can flush the rest of the fluid. So it's really critical when giving IV push drugs that you think about how much fluid is in this and how do I adjust the timing of my medication in order to make sure that my patient gets the medication at the prescribed period of time. So I'm going to put it all together and show you what this will actually look like in the IV push checkoff lab. Let's put it all together and give an IV push drug and we'll use uh, furosemide 20 milligrams. And so what you need to do initially is collect all your supplies. You'll have a medication card X. You're going to verify the information um, about the drug, the order, the dose, um, and the route of administration. And as you're gathering information about your drug, you need to gather the nursing information about your drug too. The actions of the drug, what the therapeutic response is expected to be, because once you understand how the patient's supposed to respond to the drug, you'll know what important nursing assessments need to be done before you give the drug. And of course, you need to know side effects and normal dosages of the drug. And please don't forget, you have to know the amount of time that the drug is pushed over. And every um, IV um, drug administration book will tell you the amount of time you need to push it over. So once you've gathered all the information about your drug, then you need to gather the supplies that you'll need. Two flushes, three milliliters each, one for before, one for after, and then, of course, your drug. And again, we'll be giving furosemide 20 milligrams. The furosemide is 10 milligrams per milliliter, so I'll need two milliliters. And so just clean off your vial. Now, in most instances, you'll be using a single-dose vial. I know when you learned to give insulin, um, it was a multi-dose vial, and so you had to inject air before you withdrew your drug. You don't need to do that with a single-dose vial, which is what you'll usually use in the hospital. So I'll need two milliliters of Lasix. Pull up your two milliliters. Get rid of any bubbles. And when you're getting rid of bubbles, you have to hold your syringe upright so that the air is on top and then push the air bubble out. Safely recap your syringe. And then we'll go to the patient's room, taking your supplies and your medication cardex. When you get to the patient's room, be sure to wash your hands. And then you want to verify, as part of the five rights of medication administration, that you've got the right patient. And every patient that you have in the IV push lab will have a name band on. So compare the medication cardex with the patient's name date of birth, and medical record number. Once you're sure that you have the correct patient, then you can proceed with giving the medications. So let's go down here. When you come into the patient's room, because it's a saline lock, you need to assess the condition of the IV. Make sure there's no redness, no swelling, no edema, no drainage. And then the second step to verify that your saline lock is still functional is that you need to flush and aspirate before you give the drug to make sure it's in the vein. So clean off the port. Use your first flush, connect it to the tubing, and the first thing you'll do is aspirate to see if you can get blood return. Pull back a little bit. Oh, I've got a good blood return on this IV. Now, you don't always get a good blood return. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're not in the vein. If you don't get blood return, it may just mean that the catheter is up against the wall of the vessel, and if that happens to you, you don't get blood return, you can just flush slowly and observe for any signs of infiltration, which would mean that you'd see um, edema start to collect at the end of the catheter. Go ahead and flush slowly. Make sure the patient's not feeling any discomfort as you flush. And if you flush that in and not seen it bubble up, then you know you're in the right place. So you flush beforehand. Clean the port again and put the drug on. And remember what I said about thinking about the length of the tubing. So we've got two milliliters of Lasix in this syringe. We're going to give it over a minute, which means we'd give about a half a milliliter every 15 seconds. But we have, we know, 0.7 milliliters that we have to account for in this extension tubing. So go ahead and push your half a milliliter. And when you do that, it just barely starts to show up in the tubing. So there's no sense in timing it at this point. What you want to do is go ahead and push 
until about a milliliter is in, and now you know that the drug is completely filling the tubing. Now you can start to time. So now we'll do half a milliliter, wait 15 seconds. I won't wait 15 seconds for the purposes of this videotape. When you're in your IV push checkoff lab, we actually do want you to wait the required period of time. Another half a milliliter, wait 15 seconds. Another half a milliliter, wait 15 seconds. The last half a milliliter, wait 15 seconds, and now here's the really important thing to notice. Notice that you still have a whole bunch of the drug in the extension tubing. You cannot now put this flush on and just flush this in. You have to wait 15 seconds and then give the flush at the same rate that you gave the drug. Half a milliliter, wait 15 seconds. A half a milliliter, wait 15 seconds. Half a milliliter, wait 15 seconds. Now the drug is out of the tubing. Now we can go ahead and just complete the flush. And now we're finished giving the IV push drug through a saline lock. You can go ahead then and clamp off the tubing on the extension set. Document the medication that you gave. Dispose of your needle safely. Wash your hands before you leave the patient's room. And you're finished. Okay, part B of our video now will be giving IV push medications through an existing IV. The checkoff sheet that you used for IV medications through an exi existing IV is the same as for a saline lock. You'll just notice that some of the steps are a little bit different. So some of the unique considerations that go with giving IV medications through an existing IV are that now, in addition to our extension tubing, which we talked about in the saline lock um, video, we now have another length of tubing before we get to the port where we will be giving our medications. And so you have probably, since it's the same length as that, about another 0.7 milliliters that you need to be thinking about when you give this. Now, we understand that every set of IV tubing is a little bit different, and we can't give you hard and fast rules of exactly how much volume there is to the tenth of a milliliter. You just need to be thinking about these things as you give your IV push medications. And the most important thing is to make sure that you give your flush slowly after the medication so that you're not bolusing the patient with a large volume of the drug. So the other thing that is a little bit different when giving IV medications through an existing IV is that you're now going to be injecting a drug into tubing that may already have a drug infusing in it. And in my existing IV, I already have a drug, as you can tell by this yellow label, mixed in the IV. So now I need to wonder if the drug I'm about to give through the IV is compatible with what's hanging in the infusion bag. And in order to figure that out, I need to look at a compatibility chart. And in the lab, we have a compatibility chart on the wall. And in many drug books, right in the front of the drug book, there's also a compatibility chart. So what you need to do is determine what drug you'll be giving, and we'll use furosemide or Lasix again, and then see what the drug is in the bag. And when you come to the lab um, on the checkoff day, we could have potentially anything in that bag. So you'll need to look at the bag, find the drug that's in the bag, find the drug that you'll be giving on the other list, and then follow those two down to where the two drugs intersect in the little box. And in that box, there will be a code, and it will either say C for compatible, it will say X to tell you it's incompatible, or it may be blank. If it's blank, that means information is not available, and in that case, we will just treat it as if the two drugs are incompatible. And so what that means is if you have an incompatible drug, you have to flush that drug out of the line before you start your IV push. If they're compatible, then it's not um, a consideration or something that you have to worry about. So I'm just, oh, and the other thing that you have to think about when giving through an existing IV is, what will you do with the IV while you're pushing your drug? Especially if it's incompatible, you cannot be infusing that IV while you're pushing your drug. And so what you need to do is put this on hold, and on every IV, there's a hold button. Put that on hold, it will generally stop the IV for about a minute. If you forget to turn it back on, the pump will start to alarm to tell you that you forgot to turn it back on. So I'm just gonna restart this for now until we're actually ready to start giving the drug. So let's put it all together and actually give the drug through an existing IV. I'll come to my patient's bedside with the medication administration record in my hand, clean my hands. I've already verified that it, the um, dose and the route and the correct drug. I'll check my patient's identity against the medication record, name, date of birth, 
medical record number. Now the next thing I need to check, as I told you, is the drug that I'm giving against the drug in the bag to see if they're compatible or not compatible. And again, we'll be using Lasix or furosemide, 20 milligrams. And I look at the drug in my bag, and I find the two of them on the compatibility chart, follow them down, and I find that they're not compatible with each other. So now I have a special consideration, which is not just stopping the IV while I give the drug, but making sure that all of that drug that's not compatible with my Lasix is out of the tubing before I give it. And so what that means is that I need to flush with 10 milliliters of normal saline before I give my Lasix. After the Lasix is done, I need to have flushed 10 milliliters through before I can restart my IV. So let's do that. I'll draw up my Lasix. And again, if it's a single dose vial, you really don't need to inject air. And most of the time when we give drugs in the hospitals, we're pulling the drugs from a single dose vial. Get your bubbles out. Make sure that you have the correct volume. And I have two milliliters. We'll do another check. I have two milliliters. Furosemide, 10 milligrams per milliliter. Two milliliters would be 20 milligrams. I check my medication card X. That is the correct dose. Now, when I come into my patient's room, remember we had talked about the volume in the extension tubing, and now I've got this volume to consider, which is probably another milliliter or so. We can't give you exact to the tenth of a milliliter measurements, but that's probably close to a milliliter, and we already know from looking at the package that that's about 0.7 milliliters. So the first thing I need to do again is put my IV on hold. If you forget and just clamp off the tubing while it's running, it'll alarm and let you know and you can put it on hold then. So I need to always select the port that is closest to the patient. I need to assess the condition of my IV site. And if you have an IV site that looks good and an IV that's infusing um, without any signs of infiltration, you don't need to aspirate for blood first. With a saline lock, because you don't have an infusing IV, you need to aspirate and see if you can get blood return before you give your IV push med through a saline lock. Sometimes you don't get blood return from a saline lock. It doesn't necessarily mean it's not in. It may just be that the catheter is up against the wall of the vein. In that case, you're going to flush with two to three milliliters slowly um, before you give the drug through a saline lock and assess for any signs of infiltration. But again, this is an existing IV. The site looks good and so we can assume that it is not infiltrated. Clamp off the tubing, and again, because the drug that's infusing in my bag is incompatible with Lasix, I have to flush with 10 milliliters to make sure that all that drug is out of the tubing before I give my Lasix. All right, now all the drug is out of the tubing. It's safe for me to give my Lasix. Still holding the tubing of the IV clamped. Now, here we go again, thinking about the volume of drug you're giving, which is only two milliliters, all this tubing, which is probably a milliliter, and then all this tubing, which we know is seven-tenths of a milliliter. That is 1.7 milliliters, almost all of your LASIK. So you need to think about where the drug is as you're pushing. And we said we'd be pushing a half a milliliter every 15 seconds. So if I push a half a milliliter, you see the drug isn't anywhere near my patient. It only goes to about there in the tubing. So it's pointless to start timing at this point because the patient isn't even getting any of the drug yet. Push another half a milliliter, and where am I? Still not to my patient, only to there. It's pointless to start timing at this point. Push the next half a milliliter, now it's to the patient. Once your drug gets to the patient, now start the pushing of whatever volume we've determined and the timing. So now I'll push a half a milliliter and wait 15 seconds. Well now look what I have. I have all of my drug gone, but almost all of it in the tubing. If I just hooked this flush on now and flushed in 10 milliliters of fluid, my patient would be getting almost their entire dose of Lasix in a couple of seconds, which as you'll know, as you gain more experience, can be really dangerous for your patient. And so what I'm going to do now is flush at the same rate that I was giving the drug before. Flush a half a milliliter, wait 15 seconds, which we won't do just for the purposes of the film. Half a milliliter, 15 seconds. Half a milliliter, 15 seconds. That's just my IV pump alarming to remind me that it's been on hold for a minute. I'll just press the hold button again. 
Now all the drug is in my patient. I've got about four milliliters left. But since all the drug is in my patient in the proper period of time, it's safe for me to flush the remaining four milliliters of fluid. Now I know that 10 milliliters of flush has gone in after the Lasix. And so it's OK now for me to unclamp this tubing and restart my IV. You can wait just a moment to make sure that the IV will continue to infuse normally as it was before. Wash your hands. Dispose of your needles appropriately. And then document your medication administration.